Hi Floss Tube. I am Heather and this is the 20 minute stitcher. Uh, welcome to my Floss Tube channel. Today is Sunday, August 14th, 2022. And this is Floss Tube episode 24, I think. I just realized that I forgot to bring my planner down here. So um, I could do the responsible thing and like stop and go get it and um, be organized. Or I could just plow ahead and see how it goes. Let's live on the wild side, shall we? Um, it's been a it's been a day. Um, school starts tomorrow for my daughter, and she right now is upstairs being um, a bit of an anxious mess and kind of not letting anyone help her. So I decided I'd come film my floss tube, which might sound really callous, but you know I have just learned that sometimes I just have to walk away and let her either stew or deal with it herself or at least calm down. Um, I love my kid to death, but sometimes she gets really stubborn and I'm really stubborn. And so sometimes the best thing is to just get some space for a little while. Once I'm done, I'll go see if we're in a better place. Uh, so this week I actually got quite a bit of stitching done. Um, and I have some cool things to show you guys. So I have uh, whips, I have progress on three different whips. I have a new start and um, I have a little bit of um, haul to share. So um, why don't we go ahead and just get started? So again, I don't have my planner with me, so I'm not gonna be able to go in the order that I stitched, but um, I worked on three whips this week. Um, I have to laugh once again, like so those of you who are regulars on my channel, um, know that I set some goals for August and one of them was Witchy Wednesdays uh, to work on my um, Tiny Modernist When Witches Go Riding Sal um, on Wednesdays. We've now been through two Wednesdays in August. I've not worked on it at all. I keep forgetting that Wednesdays are Witchy Wednesdays. This week I forgot that Wednesday was Wednesday. Like I kept thinking it was Thursday. Um, so I don't have that to show but um, but I have made some pretty good progress on uh, my goals. So I know um, in my last video, I shared that I had met my goal of working on my Primrose Cottage Stitches Firework Kisses um, on August 4th, on the 4th of each month. So I did that. Um, I finished Tigger on my Cats of Disney Stitch Along. Um, and then I had made progress on a few of my other goals. So uh, this week I continued toward my goals. My goals were overly ambitious. I know I'm not gonna meet them all, but um, one of my goals was to get a page finish on the Modern Folk Embroidery uh, Pride Stitch Along. So um, as a reminder, this is the finished piece, uh, the Move Forward in Love uh, by Modern Folk Embroidery. Um, and if I have a before picture, which I think I do, I will put it up on the screen now, uh, but uh, this I sat and worked on some last night and uh, basically sort of all the orange over here. So the orange here and here, the orange down here, the orange in here and the white here um, is, is what I added in uh, last night. I sat and worked on this last night. Um, and so I am at about, so basically where these stop is the page here and this is the end of the page here. Um, I think I'm at about 60% done with uh, with the first page. And my goal on this one was a page finish in August. So we'll see. Uh, I still have quite a ways to go. Um, but a lot of it is filling in in here. So it's stitching that moves pretty quickly. So we'll see. I'm still optimistic I can get the page finish on, uh, on this one. So again, this is the Modern Folk Embroidery Pride Stitch Along for 2022. I'm using all the called for DMC colors. Um, and this is being stitched on 32 count Lugana by Be Stitch Me in the color Frost. So I worked just one day on that one this week. Uh, and then the two that I worked on the most were my Haunted Library Stitch Along and my Magic Kingdom Stitch Along. Um, so my Haunted Library Stitch Along, all these great floss colors, I love them. Um, my goal on this one is to get the prologue finished uh, by August 26th when chapter one releases. I am not at all optimistic that that's actually gonna happen. Still my goal, um, and I am making progress, um, but uh, I think I'm at like 56% complete on the page 
that this is on, um, but I'm only like 23% done with the whole prologue or something like that. Um, so I'm not optimistic that I'm going to get this finished, but, um, but I'm still loving stitching on it. I have a little skull face now, which I don't think I had, um, at my last finish. If I, if I have a picture again, I'm not great at taking my pictures. I'm trying to be better, but if I have a picture, I'll put it here. Um, but it's coming together. I'm getting up to the point where it's starting to like, um, the inside of the banister rail comes down this way and I'm getting close to the point, like right up here are the first set of little books and then kind of right up here is where it starts to turn to get to the top level. So, um, you know, I'm getting close to the point where I'm going to be able to do some big blocks of color, um, across the top, um, of the, of the stairs. So I'm optimistic again, that this will start to move a little bit more quickly. It mo it's moving a little slowly right now because there are a lot of page colors. Um, and the designer, um, I should say it's by Lola Crow Designs, the Haunted Library Stitch Along. She's on Etsy. Um, the, she even said, you know, if, if you're not going to be able to finish by 26, focus on getting the 310 done um, because most of it is 310 and it'll give you a good outline to the next, to the chapters that come after and you can kind of fill in from there. I'm being stubborn and, <laughs> and, and wanting to fill in as I go um, just because I know that I'm going to have our time being done by August 26th anyway. Um, so that is my Haunted Library Stitch Along. And then the next piece I worked on was my Magic Kingdom Stitch Along by Cunning Cross Stitch. Um, and my two goals related to this one were to finish the Alice in Wonderland scene and finish the Snow White scene. Um, Alice in Wonderland took forever because it was a million little color changes. It would be like three stitches of this color and 12 stitches of this color and two stitches of this color and seven stitches of the next color. Um, but I did finish Alice and come in a little close. Um, and I, as you can see, I got a pretty decent start on Snow White. I think Snow White is going to go much more quickly because other than the seven dwarfs, which are kind of going in here, I don't know, the light's sort of picking up. I've got sort of this light yellow here and you can see there are sort of the little, the light yellow goes around the dwarves, right? So here's Dopey and then I don't know what order they're in after that, but the dwarves kind of go down this way. Um, other than the dwarves, it's a lot of what you see up here kind of larger blocks of one color. Um, and so this one is stitching along much faster. The thing that I've started doing, I think I mentioned this in my last video, is I've, I've started watching the, um, the Disney movie while I stitch. Um, so this was Snow White, the original Snow White, is an hour and 37 minutes. Um, the darker orange up here at the top, I had put in while watching a show with my son, but everything else I got in, watching the original Snow White. Um, so I would have to watch it probably four or five more times to finish. It only gets one watch. Then I'll watch something else <laughs> while I stitch. Um, but I'm, I'm, I am optimistic that I can make this goal uh, because like I said, this Snow White scene is stitching up much more quickly because it's much larger blocks of the same color. Um, Alice in Wonderland was... Um, it, the, the end result is very nice. It, I really like the end result. But um, I'm one of those stitchers. I get really bored stitching the same color all the time. Generally. Like, I'm sure all of us, there are some times where I'm like, boy, it would be really nice to just have a one color pattern that I can just, just stitch on and really don't have to think about anything except the counting, right? I don't have to pay attention to symbols and whatnot. Um, and then... The other end of the spectrum for me is the ones with tons of color changes, which is funny because when I was a younger stitcher, I loved the ones with tons of color changes. Um, and now I am much more middle of the road. Like, give me some bigger blocks and I'm happy. Um, so all that to say is that Snow White, um, I did meet my goal of finishing Alice in Wonderland. I am optimistic that I will meet my goal of finishing Snow White because I really think if I can get maybe two or three hours of good stitching time in, um, I can get her done. So that is the Magic Kingdom Stitch Along by Cunning Cross Stitch. I'm just stitching that with the called for DMCs. Um, it's just on some sort of mystery linen that um, I had in my house. And uh, that is that is that by the Cunning Cross Stitch. Um, I just realized I never really gave much of a life update or anything like that. I guess I can do that. 
after my new start because let's show the new start. So a long while back, I think I mentioned that I had signed up to be a model stitcher for Brandy at Be Stitch Me. She's opening a brick and mortar uh, store in Illinois where she lives. And she had put a call out for model stitchers. We got to choose the pattern we wanted to stitch and she provided the fabric and the floss. Um, and then we get to keep the pattern and any leftover floss. Um, and uh, so I got, finally got my, my kit in the mail this week. And it's funny, we had a little bit of a, a miscommunication on fabric sizing. Um, I said, preferably nothing smaller than 32 count and I was thinking fabric weave, like size, and she obviously was thinking number. Um, so I got sent a 40 count, which kind of freaked me out at first. And then I went, hey, wait, this will be great practice for my Halloween Quaker, which is on 40 count because I've never stitched on 40 count before. Um, and so I did start stitching it. She sent me just a 40 count even weave in the color Honey. Um, and the pattern that I am stitching, sorry for all the plastic, I forgot that I had a, the bag closed in here. Um, the pattern that I am stitching for her is Primrose Cottage Stitches Hive Rules, which is right here. Um, I have loved this pattern since it came out, so I was very happy to get to um, stitch it for her um, and then have the pattern available to stitch it for myself as well. So she sent just all the called for DMCs. And I didn't get much of a start on this. I really kind of just started enough of it just to see like, oh my gosh, am I going to be able to like stitch on 40 count? Um, and it's actually really nice. For one thing, it's nice stitching with just one strand of floss, right? Less twists and tangles and things like that. Um, but that's all I got. It doesn't look like much of anything right now. It's the start of the H. Um, I'm stitching this one strand of floss over two. And uh, I'm really... It's not anywhere near as difficult as I thought it would be. I thought that I would um, be feeling very old um, <laughs> because I was worried that I was going to have trouble seeing the holes. Um, so I just, I stitch with um, an ot light, like a floor stand ot light um, over my shoulder. That's, that's what I stitch with 90% of the time. Um, and it worked just fine for this. Um, so I am really excited to kind of... Uh, to add this into my rotation and, and get it done for Brandy. So um, that was my new start this week, such as it was. Like I said, it's really only about 30 stitches, just as I wanted to kind of get the feel for the 40 count fabric and see what I thought about it. Um, it's kind of fun. So, so that's all of the stitching that I got done this week. I'm going a little out of order. I guess normally I do a life update. I sort of already mentioned sort of why I came down to film tonight just to give my daughter some space, but, um, I have had quite a week. So work is super busy. It's all good stuff, but super busy. Um, but my excitement for the week, I don't know if you can see on my arm, it's really healing up quite a bit. Oh gosh, it isn't even showing on the camera. Oh good. I, um, I got bitten by something. There's a little puncture mark right there. Um, and my body reacted the way it has like never reacted. I mean, I had, you know, like this big around bright red, hot to the touch. Um, and it just wasn't, it wasn't getting any bigger, right? I took a Sharpie and like drew the line <laughs> around the outside, but it wasn't getting any smaller either. I ended up going to express care to have it looked at. Um, and, uh, they prescribed antibiotics that they said that I could fill if I decided that like I needed to, like if it wasn't getting, if it's, if it got any larger or if it wasn't, you know, kind of cooling down and, and getting less angry looking. Um, I had been putting hydrocortisone cream on it and it wasn't working. And I was like, why is this cream not working? Like the nurse said that the hydrocortisone should work. And then I looked and saw that it expired in like 2017. Um, I mean, I know that stuff lasts longer than its expiration date, but I don't think it lasts like five years longer. So I'll, after my moment of embarrassment, I went and got some new hydrocortisone cream and uh, um, it started clearing up uh, much better. So I'm actually like looking at it in real life. I It's still a little red and splotchy, but it's kind of reassuring to see that it's not picking up on the camera. So that was my excitement. I have no idea what bit me. We thought at first it was a spider, but there's only the one puncture mark. Puncture mark. So um, 
we're guessing it was some sort of biting fly or something. I don't know. I was at my daughter's high school. I was helping the marching band with uh, getting their uniforms ready for their pictures. Um, and I literally was just standing there. And all of a sudden I was like, ow, like, why is my arm hurting? And I looked down and I could see, right, the bite mark and the little welt around it. And I didn't think much of it. And then the next morning it was this, you know, inch and a half around red angry thing. <laughs> crazy. So that was my fun for the week. Um, and what else this week? I don't know. We've got, um, a lot of recruiting work going on for my son's Cub Scout pack. Um, uh, like a lot of volunteer community organizations, especially ones involving kids. Um, Cub Scouts was hit really, really hard by COVID. We lost so many members and last year, you know, only had like one or two new members join the pack. Um, a lot of families, I think, were still being very conservative, especially those with younger kids that weren't yet eligible for vaccines. Um, so this year, we're really, really trying to, you know, now that everyone can be vaccinated or just about everyone can be vaccinated, um, we're really trying to put a push on push on recruiting. So we had a big recruiting event on Saturday. Um, and we've got several coming up this week at school, like meet the teacher nights and things like that. We have tables set up. So I've been really busy kind of getting things ready um, for that, I'm, I'm the committee chair of my son's PAC, so um, I do a lot of the sort of administrative work um, for, for the PAC. Um, so that's kind of what my life's been about. I'm super far behind on watching my floss tubes. So those of you who usually, who like are wondering where my little likes and, st and comments are, I just haven't had any chance this week to watch. Um, I hopefully will be able to kind of catch up here and there over the course of the week. Um, and that's it. I feel very sort of disorganized this video. Um, I apologize. I am still down in my new craft room. I rotated my camera a little bit so that I could use, I have like a desk size, um, or a desk type ot light that I have basically kind of serving as a ring light for me. So the lighting I think is much better for my stitching and all that, but it's a much more boring background. So, um, I might have to get myself a second. Ot light. I can't really move this one because I have it in the space where I do my scrapbooking and things like that and I need the good light there. Um, but I think I might have to get a second one to put on the other end where I can at least have the, the wall behind me with some more interesting stuff on it than just a white door and white closet doors and my printer. So um, last thing for the video today, I mentioned I did have a little bit of a haul. Lest you say, Heather, Heather, I thought you were doing No Spend August. Um, I am doing No Spend August, though I broke it a little bit, and I'll explain why in a minute. So this is my Taylor and Cromwell um, subscription box, which I actually paid for back in March. So, um, But this was, I signed up for um, three months. They do a different theme each month, typically around um, you know, musicals or other entertainment books, um, things of that sort. Uh, the first one that I got was in either May or... April or May, and it was uh, the musical Six. Uh, this month, August, is Agatha Christie. Um, and so I subscribed to that one as well. And so that arrived this week, and it's super cute. I had to resist the urge to like start stitching it right away. Um, but their boxes come with a pattern, or a whole kit, right? pattern fabric, and the flosses, um, and a needle too. I think they include just a 24 size needle. Um, and then typically a needle minder, and then one or two other sort of fun things. Um, a lot of times it includes a bag, like a pencil case or something like that. Um, and this one was no exception. So again, this box was themed Agatha Christie. So there's a very cool Murder on the Orient Express uh, scissor fob. So it's got the little locomotive on the bottom. And I don't know if this will come across, but the beads have like... They look like little blood splotches, um, which I think is hilarious. Um, I mean, I don't think murder is hilarious, but I think it's hilarious that the beads have little blood splotches on them. Um, so there is my scissor fob. Sorry, I just realized I was very close to the camera there while I was trying to fix my scissor fob. Um, so it came with this little scissor fob, um, a needle minder, and what I am finding from um, folks in my cross-stitch chat who also got this box like three or four of us um, have shared what we got and not a single one of us got the same needle minder. So I don't know how many different needle minders they made, but they're essentially, they're meant to be like little, her books. Um, and what's really cute, I should take it off here so you can see the end, is um, 
I mean, it literally looks like I even tried to see if like I could open it because they did, you know, the edges have, you know, the, the little white, the spine has the little like gold imprint markings, but yeah, but each cover is, um, I mean, I don't know that each cover is different, but of the three or four of my, um, my friends in my chat group who also got this box, none of us have the same uh, cover. And mine is The Mystery of the Blue Train, which is not one I've ever heard of. So now I feel like I need to go look it up um, and see if it's, you know, a, a Poirot or a Miss Marple um, or just a general. Um, but one of the first mystery books I ever read, in fact, it might have been the first sort of true mystery book um, I ever read uh, as a young kid, preteen, teenager was, um, and then there were none, right? Or it was called Ten Little Indians back then, right? But they've changed the title to and then there were none. Um, and I was hooked. I was like, this is, and so I've read lots of Christie books, but not this one. Um, but anyway, so next going to go on my little needle minder holder. And then we got this cool little zippered case, little pencil case, um, with sort of just a spooky woods theme. And then the pattern kit is three bookmarks. And what's very interesting is it says set two. So we know there's at least a set one, maybe a set three, but we know at least there's a set one and a set two. Um, I have yet to see someone with a set one though. Like I very much, everyone in my, in my cross stitch chat also got set two. Um, so we're very curious to see what set one looks like, but there are three bookmarks, um, each with a quote from a different, um, Christie novel. I admittedly do not know which novels, um, but uh, maybe somewhere inside the pattern it says, but how cool are these? Like, I'm really looking forward to stitching these. They look like they'll be quick stitches um, and uh, could be lots of fun. They'd be good little gifts. So that is my haul. The only other piece of haul I have coming my way um, that is a little bit, I'm calling it a bend of my no spend August um, because I didn't buy any patterns. I didn't buy any fabric, um, but I did end up buying one more uh, Nerge hoop and um, one more, um, actually Nerge also makes uh, tension ring hoops. Um, and so I decided to buy one of those as well um, because I do have enough projects going on now that I keep having to kind of like swap out, you know, take a hoop off one and put a hoop on another to work on it. Um, and so I thought if I could get a couple more hoops, then I'm in a position where I'm not having to like completely disassemble a project, um, in order to be able to put a hoop on another. I, I like to stitch in hand when they're smaller pieces. Um, but a lot of what I'm stitching right now are bigger pieces or, um, at least pieces on larger fabric, like the stitch, stitch alongs and things like that. What I'm actually stitching might not be that large, but the fabric itself is large. Um, and I just don't do very well with stitching in hand um, on large pieces of fabric. Even with, you know, using the quilter clips and things like that to kind of roll the fabric up and, and contain it, I still, I still struggle with the stitching in hand. So I like to have a hoop. Um, I like my Q-snaps, but for, my hands get tired faster holding my Q-snaps. I don't know if it's because they're thicker, um, but the thinner tension hoop rings, the nerge hoops, um, I can stitch longer on those. My hands and wrist kind of don't start hurting as quickly as they do on my Q-snaps. It's a trade-off, right? Like I love the tension on my Q-snaps. The tension on the nerge is good, but not as good, I don't think at least. Um, I can't get it as kind of drum tight as I can on my Q-snap. Um, but I can stitch for longer on, um, on my nerd hoop, um, than I can on my Q-snap. So anywho, all right. So that is my update. Um, I have not forgotten about my stitch with me's and figuring out some more things that I can do with my overhead camera that I got. Um, as I mentioned before, things are so busy right now in August between work and getting the kids back to school, um, that I think, I think that's going to have to wait until, um, a little later in the fall when things hopefully settle down a little bit. But um, so yeah, my daughter goes back to school bright and early tomorrow morning. Her bus picks her up at 6.40 a.m. Um, my son goes back to school on Thursday and uh, we'll be off to the races then. For those of you who also are sending kids and grandkids and um, other young ones important in your life back to school this week or next week, um, good luck. I hope everyone has a great start to the school year. For those of you who might be going back to school yourselves, 
good luck. Have a great start to your school year as well. Um, if you are new to my channel, I hope you liked what you saw. Um, I hope that you choose to subscribe. Uh, ring that bell so you get notifications. I tend to upload usually earlier in the day than this, um, but I tend to upload on Sundays or late on Saturdays. Um, and uh, those of you who have been with me for the long haul, you know how much I love to have you here. Um, as always, would love to hear what you're stitching. Um, oh, and those of you who gave me suggestions about like a stitching journal to kind of like a stitching scrapbook, basically, I haven't I haven't ignored you. I did respond to your comments. I, I keep looking. Um, and I just, I'm struggling to find, um, to find something. I'm gonna have to figure something out. So uh, stay tuned. Maybe I'll have some news for that in my next video. So I hope all of you have a wonderful week. Hug those you love. Take care of yourselves and each other. Happy stitching. And I will see you again soon. Have a great week. Bye.